Good evening everybody. Uh, I've got a uh, Philips M6 transistor radio that I, I picked up virtually for nothing but it came with another radio I bought. Now, I don't normally do transistors because they're way out of my league and uh, I struggle with valves so I'm not going into transistors. But anyway I managed to get this one going. Well it didn't work at all when I first got it. The, uh, the uh, on off switch was um, faulty so I fixed that. Um, I changed a handful of the electrolytic capacitors and um, that got it going. One of them was short, it was actually like a coupling capacitor so uh, it was letting full voltage straight onto the amp. So I uh, replaced that one and it started working um, and then I replaced the lot and uh, it's working quite well now. So I want to try and restore it to making it look reasonably new so I'm thinking of either painting that or some way to get the, the white back into it. It used to be white now, it's a cream colour. Uh, I'll see what I do with that but this video is not about the radio itself. It's about an issue that it has, and I'll just turn it up for you. So this is a Dramanium transistor. It's the Oscillator Mixer transistor. It is suffering from tin whiskers disease, and tin whiskers grow from the, the outside casing, and they start touching the the elements inside the uh, the collector emitter and the base start to short together with the little tin whiskers. So this one responds to me tapping it. There you go. it's because I don't know. I think So there you go. That's what it does. So what I did was found a fix for this. The fix is an article on the internet where uh, it's written by Mark Hennessy, and I'll leave a link below in the description so you can read the article. Uh, but what he's saying is, and I've seen it written before, but anyway, this guy's written it up very nicely, um, is you tie the uh, base emitter and collector together, solder them together, and this uh, transistor has a shield lead on it. Uh, you keep that separate, and then you put a capacitor discharge through them, and it should uh, burn off the tin whiskers, and your transistor should return to operation. Now, I tried doing, doing uh, several things last time with the transistor I had trouble with, and that ended in disaster. So there you go. So I'm not going to heat it again. Uh, that I learned that one. So what I'm going to do is I'll pop that transistor out and we'll try and uh, do uh, Mark's idea. is a hundred um, microfarad capacitor so that's what I've got and I'm going to feed a my shop uh, DC current into the capacitor and then we're going to discharge it across these three joined together legs into the uh, shield and hopefully burn off the, uh, the little whiskers in there. All right, there he is I've connected it to the uh, capacitor and these uh, the three leads there are all soldered together I've got the uh, shop uh, DC uh, power supply on there uh, that's on the positive side. I've got the negative side on the negative side of the capacitor, but uh, I don't think it makes any difference as far as the transistor is concerned. I, I don't assume it does. So all I'm going to do is put shop power on, and then I'll push this together, and we should be able to see a, a spark here. I'm hoping. If you see a spark here, then it's obviously done something. Um, now, the, in these articles, said these things are made of glass. It doesn't look like glass, but he said you might be lucky enough to see a flash. So I've put the camera there. Maybe we'll catch a flash inside. Now John also says use 30 volt power, but I don't have that, I've only got 16, so uh, that's all I can do. Anyway, we'll give it a go, it's had time to charge, Let's see what happens. Nothing. <laughs> really? Hmm, it's there, not getting any sparks, I thought I'd get something. Alright. Okay, I've got a permanent connection there now. Now the other thing he said was to um, put the power through it and just whack it to try and get any whiskers to uh, to arc across if there are any that are close but not touching yet. Now I'm not quite whacking it the way he was. He was banging with a screwdriver and hitting against the vice as well. So I don't know.
Yeah. I've got to say that's not terribly successful. There's a, certainly a spark there. Where are we? Yeah. So the capacitor's charged. So I guess success will be measured by if there's still continuity there. So just short that out. Capacitor's shorted out. Okay. I've turned power off. I'll just check it for continuity, see if it's still got any continuity there. No. Dead short. <laughs> what a waste of time that was. I don't know if that was very successful. It may be that I don't have enough power. I've only got 16 volts, so, uh, and he was talking about 30. So I'll, I've put it back in. The radio came on straight away. I'll just see what it does. No. No. Still the same. I didn't. I didn't think it had done it. So either we look for a bit more power to put through it, or just try and find a substitute or a new old stock one. The trouble with new old stock ones is they all generally suffer the same uh, issue. So let's see if I can find some more power. Let's have another go at this. I've connected the capacitor to a uh, radio I'm working on and uh, just stealing a bit of the DC off that. So we'll get um, near 100 volts, I would think. Um, so I'll just charge the capacitor. Uh, the little uh, transistor is not touching anything at the moment. I'm not sure it'll jump that gap. It shouldn't do. And I've got the um, variac on, so so the rectifier is kicking in there. We're just getting up some voltage now. I reckon we'll get up to about 100. Well, it's 50. Let's uh, stop it there. So I'm going to shut down the radio that's supplying the power. I'll probably keep going a bit. Okay, so that capacitor has got 50 odd volts in it, or 65 volts in it. Let's uh, see what happens. I've got my safety glasses on. Nothing. <laughs> what? Nothing? It's not doing anything. So the power's off. It's got 62 volts in there. It's not doing anything. Yeah. So I'm going to put the power back on. Get it up a bit higher and see if that'll arc across to the little whiskers and uh, burn them off. Yeah, she's starting to climb again. So we'll take it up maybe to about 90 odd volts. We'll see what happens then. Okay, I'll turn the power off. So that should settle down somewhere in near 90. Okay, we've got about 80, 88 volts there. So let's have another go. Safety goggles on. Nothing. It's not doing anything. Hmm. Looks like I'm going to buy a new transistor. That's supposed to work. It's not working. I'll just short that out and I'll guarantee it's got a spark in there. Hmm. It certainly has. So it's not um, it's not burning those whiskers off. They're too far away. I don't know. Um, maybe I should check it. Maybe it's done something. Didn't do it last time, so I don't see why it would this time. Alright, we'll see what it's got on it, and it's... Ooh, open. How about that? Maybe it did fix it. I expected it to spark or something. Ooh, that's good. Okay, I'll put it back in the radio and we'll see what it does. Okay, I'm going to put the power on. It's working. Let's tune in something. We're going back to the Crescent City, New Orleans, for one of its great... There have been... Okay, so it's working all right at the moment. Um, now that's the little guy there. I'm going to give it a whack and see what happens. I'm looking at some of the dark blank face for all those who are wondering, like, huh? What's that? What about John Ramastella? How about that? Also known as Johnny Rivers. Hey, Why wasn't he as big as us? Because there already was. I reckon it's working. That's fixed it. Well, on a temporary basis, that's uh, fixed that, I reckon. Look at that, it's solid. Well, there you go. So there's a, a really good tip from uh, John, and I know it's a, 
I know there's lots of it, but John wrote it out succinctly and uh, you could understand it. Put some little photos in there. So if you're doing that, you can't have a look at his uh, web page. And I'll, I'll, as I said, I'll leave a link in the bottom, uh, down the bottom. This radio was missing its knob and somebody put another knob on, which was hopeless. So I do have this one here, which is the same era. And it's a bit smaller than uh, most knobs on radio. But it's got a, I would think that's about a 316 shaft on it. Uh, and a squared off or a flattened off one. Uh, this one's smaller again. I, don't, I haven't measured them yet, but I think what I'm, I'm going to try and do is make a sleeve to fit over that uh, with a flat on it, and then fit this on the top. Now I'm not sure how that's going to work because I think that by the time I file a flat on it, I won't have much material left. Anyway, I'll give it a go, and uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> There it is, I pushed it on and uh, it went on quite nicely. Nice and firm but not too tight and I can get it off again. So, And there's the knob on it. So yeah, that's worked out pretty good. Quite happy with that. Good. So clean everything up and just a matter of putting it all back together now. Well, there it is, a Philips MT6, I'm not sure what year it was, mid 60s somewhere, transistor, and uh, looks pretty good. I was going to redo the face in white, it originally was white, but I thought it doesn't look too bad and uh, it was going to be a bit tricky, so I, I didn't bother with it. And I reckon it looks alright, it actually looks pretty good with the brown and the tan, tanny coloured brown. <laughs> anyway, a uh, little knob came out alright, that works, that works uh, very well. Uh, and it's not a bad little set, seeing the, the condition it was in when I got it. And we managed to fix that germanium transistor. So uh, that's what the video was all about. It kind of ended up being a little bit about the radio as well. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. And if you've got any of these old trannies, maybe you can save them. Uh, as I said, it's on the internet. But, uh, I thought I'd put it into a video and uh, see how it works and what you really need to do to get it going. So very happy with that. Well, thank you so much for watching, and if you can subscribe, that'll be terrific. Um, give me a like, uh, leave a comment, that'll be fantastic as well. So I'll be back shortly with my next radio adventure. No worries. Well, look, what happened was that I'm writing a biography at the moment about this amazing um, colonial artist called Adelaide Einstein.